Vanessa, and today we're recording one of our It's For You interviews with Member of the European Parliament, Mr. Radan Kanev. Hello, Mr. Kanev. Hello. Uh, first question, could you introduce yourself? Sure, yes. I'm, uh, as you said, Member of the, of the European Parliament, coming from Bulgaria, uh, from a centrist strike coalition uh, called the Democratic Bulgaria, and uh, Member of the EPP group uh, here in the Parliament. So we're here basically for this interview. Uh, because we had uh, a de university debate with the New Bulgarian University a couple of weeks back. And uh, we have a few questions over that topic to you directly. The topic was migration. And uh, the first question that I would have is, um, what is your honest opinion about migrants? So do you believe that Europe needs more migrants or not? Uh, I think, and uh, I don't think I'm really original about it, uh, that uh, it's, uh, it's really difficult question and it really has many answers and uh, certainly it's a uh, it's a topic that we must go out of ideology to uh, to give an answer and I'm no enemy of ideology uh, I think as a politician uh, I have uh, I have many political convictions and ideas but uh, when we speak about about migrants we speak uh, usually on uh, uh, two different topics uh, we speak uh, about the values of migration, of a society accepting migrants. We have a value-based conversation, and we have also pragmatic interest-based conversation. Uh, and th these are really different, uh, and uh, you have no two identical cases. So uh, I don't like when we speak for migration with a very big M, uh, and especially here in the, in the Parliament uh, Hemicycle, it's very typical that for most colleagues, unfortunately, uh, you know what they would tell before they, they have even started. Uh, you can foretell almost each parliamentary debate on, on migration because it's so much about ideological cliches. But migration is uh, uh, really an uh, essentially significant part uh, of human society from, uh, from uh, our earliest history uh, till now. Uh, I spoke a lot about that in this uh, university debate, that uh, we know about migration for thousands of years. It's, it's well documented. People are moving uh, by, uh, by social reasons, uh, because of war, because of climate issues, which is so, uh, so much spoken about nowadays. But always in history, Migration waves were due to, to climate reasons or to uh, environmental reasons uh, or to, to environment degradation caused by, uh, by human behavior, be it agriculture or wood cutting for uh, energy or, or whatever. Uh, people are moving and will move all the time. The question of foreigners crossing borders was questioned in whole human history. And, and we've seen so many different decisions, most of them wrong at the end of the day. Uh, so uh, we, we cannot uh, speak of migration with, uh, as I said, with a big M and say it's, uh, it's bad, it's evil, it's useful, it's, uh, uh, it's harmful. No, it's, uh, it's different. And I would say even each, uh, each person crossing the border is, uh, is an individual case. He, he might be a, a real refugee, a victim. And then our value-based conversation uh, has already our, our laws, our principles, our international conventions. We have to admit him by law, but we have to, to admit him by basic human uh, ethics. Uh, and uh, of course, he might be a terrorist. Here we have two, two images that are politically abused so many times. Every migrant is a victim, or every migrant is a terrorist. No, we have both. So I wanted to move to something that you said a little earlier, at least about your experience within the EU. So to give uh, an idea to our audience, how does the EU manages uh, migration flows uh, coming in and out of its borders? Political abuse that I mentioned uh, is, uh, is a big problem. So one of the reasons uh, we obviously don't do very well with, with this topic uh, is, uh, is populism and political abuse. And uh, I have to, to stress uh, out that uh, uh, left-wing populism is also populism. Value-based uh, uh, 
ideology is also uh, is also populist. So we don't only have the right wing populism. Uh, then, uh, of course, we have a, a, an even bigger problem, uh, which is that uh, the question whether and to what extent it's national policy and to what extent it's, uh, it's European policy uh, is very unclear and we haven't uh, moved a lot on, uh, on that, that question. And uh, exactly uh, first because of, uh, of populism on European level and then of political issues on national level and between the European institutions and the member states I don't think we have uh, a clear perspective for an answer to, to that question. Uh, we, we speak about the revision of the Dublin regulations and before the European election. It was a big topic in Bulgaria back in 2019. What is our position for revision of, uh, of the Dublin regulation? Of course, mo most of the candidates never read it <laughs> before answering that question, but this is normal in, uh, in politics. Uh, so we... Uh, we shall be stuck in, uh, uh, in this uh, ambivalence between uh, European and national solutions for years to come and uh, we have to, to manage and to, um, to try some uh, harm reduction within that situation because just to, to state uh, we have this problem is not enough. Yes, we have it, but we have this, uh, uh, this movement of people as well. It won't stop because we haven't cleared our legislation. This lack of clarity, of course, is an issue. There is a new pact that's been talked about, this a new pact about migration and asylum. Uh, will this new pact improve these management procedures within the EU? Early to say, in my opinion. Early to say. Uh, of course, I hope. Of course, I hope that the, the new asylum agency on which we voted last week uh, could be a, a, a big step forward because uh, it's, a, it's a great idea to have on European level clear criteria for asylum seekers and, uh, and the right to asylum. Uh, of course, this, this criteria won't uh, please uh, anybody, uh, but still it is something, it is a, it's a serious base. Because, you know, my, my personal opinion, uh, and it is more or less our legislation, although uh, fully implemented, is that when it comes to asylum, of course we need have European rules, and uh, I would say more, uh, I think uh, a uh, person who receives the, the asylum in a EU country uh, must enjoy the freedom of movement as well. He, he needs to be free within the European Union, which of course uh, will uh, be very much liked from some governments and, uh, and is liked by others, but uh, still it's, uh, uh, it's the common sense, it's the uh, uh, it's the, the legal reason be behind the right to asylum and the free, free movement within the Union. In 2015, I'm skipping ahead a little bit, we had uh, the so-called migration crisis, of course, like uh, the topic of the year, let's say. In the past two years, we had COVID, 2020 and 2021. Um, do you think that after uh, COVID, uh, Europe will be ready for a migration wave if it was to come? We'll never be ready for migration wave. As I said, historically, it's, uh, uh, it's something we're not ready for. It's always a problem. It's, uh, it's always difficult. Uh, and uh, it's difficult for everyone involved. It's very difficult for, uh, uh, for border countries like Bulgaria, like Poland. As we see now, it's, it's a different situation. Normally, when we speak of, uh, of European borders, we're very much thinking of the Mediterranean and Bulgaria with its Turkish border. And now we see that, uh, that the Northeast is also very vulnerable uh, and extremely unprepared, of course, because they, they never expected. But uh, speaking about COVID, uh, what I see lately uh, is the, because Bulgaria is, uh, is a country extremely affected by hostile propaganda last year. And uh, what you can easily see is that uh, propaganda uh, uh, like uh, building one uh, uh, stereotype image of, of migration and propaganda against vaccine and against anti-COVID measures uses uh, 
absolutely the same uh, online resources. So it's, uh, it's more or less the same thing. And when we speak about our internal problems uh, with all this crisis, we, we have to keep in mind that at least as of 2014, we as union and many of our member states are constantly victim to a rather successful propaganda and uh, we are failing to, to oppose it. So it is not exactly migration solutions, it's, uh, it's something a bit more general. But migration is a very significant topic. Picking up from your mention of the North League borders, uh, there is this new, let's say, corridor uh, coming from Belarus. Uh, how do you think that the EU should proceed uh, regarding this new corridor creating in the, in the Northeast? In this case, I, I wouldn't uh, speak either about migrant crisis or about the corridor. Uh, when we have the uh, obviously deliberate actions uh, of uh, state apparatus in Belarus, but in Russia as well, and uh, very serious suspicions of coordinated effort between Turkey, Russia, and Belarus, it's already something, uh, something very different. Uh, it's uh, the next step of this propaganda that I, uh, I spoke about. It's, uh, it's a hybrid attack on the, on the border. Uh, it is combined with a propaganda attack mm -hmm. at, uh, at the same time. So here uh, we have to think very seriously of our ability to, to react to such a common threat. And uh, it's certainly no coincidence that it's the Polish border, because Poland has all these issues internally in the EU. It's not looked at as a, as a friend by most countries. Uh, their reaction on the border was uh, fairly predictable. Uh, extremely harsh, untransparent, uh, but on the other hand, for many people, uh, firm enough and reasonable. So here there is a, a, a very, a very serious and deep conflict, and I, I say once again, it explains the, the plates. So it's not, uh, it's not a corridor. Uh, the the Balkan way, it's a corridor. It's an obvious way and. People have moved this way for millennia. Uh, the Mediterranean way, it's, uh, it's more than obvious. Well, thank you for the clarification on the corridor issue. And I have one last question, which is regarding your experience in the European Parliament. What are the tools or how could the European Parliament uh, shape migration policy in the future? The Parliament alone cannot. Uh, the Parliament uh, has... Uh, this disadvantage of uh, a very polarized debate, uh, working very much with stereotypes and uh, not uh, enough with facts and solutions, real problems and, uh, and real solutions. And uh, I think it's exactly because we don't have the powers. You know, when, when you don't have the competence, you don't have the power, uh, then uh, you're irresponsible. You're free to talk, uh, free to express yourself, to to please your voters, uh, but uh, not really give solutions. Uh, in, uh, in this case, the council is much, much more important. What parliament can do, and people like myself and uh, I would say a, a fair share of other colleagues uh, are trying to reintroduce the, the moderate debate, the reasonable debate, to, to build on common sense and not on stereotypes and ideology. And then we can be a, a very good partner to the council. But since it's so sensitive on national level, uh, the council is, uh, uh, is the place where the uh, real uh, heavy impasses could be solved. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Kahn. Thank you. Uh, thank you for watching this EP4U interview. Uh, we'll see you to the next one. Uh, and uh, we wish you a good day.